<laughs> now, uh, if you'll turn to today's sermon, the message from the scripture, coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. This is the word of God. And when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. The false gospel of material prosperity, popularly known as the word of faith movement, word of faith movement, it says that if you have enough faith, if you have enough faith, you can say and you can literally have whatever you say. If you have enough faith, you just speak into existence, into your life, like, I believe, and you will have it. Because God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to give you good things. So you have enough faith. Just say it. Then you will have it. And they would love to use verse like 20 here of our text and say, you see this? For those people who believe, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Do it. And they urge people to plant a seed. You need to plant a seed. How do we plant a seed in faith? Like You need to plant a seed in faith. Like, how do we do that? By sending them money. Sending money to their ministry. And they urge people, name your seed. Name it. Out of debt. House, marriage, husband and wife, or health, job, name it. And in faith, plant a seed. And God will miraculously give it to you. Now, if that does not work, who's going to get the blame? Not them. People are going to blame God. Or they're going to say, the people themselves. You didn't have it because you did not have enough faith. Because you didn't have enough faith. It's a massive swindle. And it has nothing to do with Christian biblical faith. I would say verse 17 of our passage will fit them more. Faithless and crooked generation. Twisted generation. They just won't use the word faith in anywhere they want to. And use the name of God in such blasphemous way. For their own benefit and desire. How then do we supposed to understand verse 20 like this? If you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed. You say to the mountain to move over here. And the mountain will be moved. And nothing will be impossible for those who believe. How are we supposed to understand this passage? This verse like this. Now we want to understand this in the broader context of the story. Why Jesus said this. And what is the message of the story. So that's what we're going to do. We will look into the story. But today what I'm going to do is not only look into this text, the parallel stories, the same story can be also found in Mark and Luke. So I'm going to look into them together. But more so in the Gospel of Mark because Mark gives a little bit more detail of this story. So if I combine all that together, basically this is what happened. 
three of Jesus' disciples and Jesus went up to the high mountain, and the Jesus' disciples, three of them, witnessed the glorious transfiguration of Jesus. Remember that story? We covered this last time. And then on the following day, Jesus and those disciples came down from the mountain. As they came down from the mountain, they saw a crowd gather around the other disciples. And the two disciples who remained under the mountain, now they were arguing with some of the scribes in the crowd, and they were arguing with each other. As soon as the crowd spotted Jesus is coming down, they ran to Jesus, and one person out of the crowd came and knelt before Jesus and said, look at our verse 15. I'm sorry, verse 7. Yes, verse 15 of our text. Verse 15, he said, he said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciple and they could not heal him. So, the scribes, so-called the religious leaders of Israel, they could not cast the demon out. So the disciples could not cast the demon out. And they were arguing with each other. And the story of our text does not give us any detail about what they were arguing about casting out demons because that's not the focus. That's not the focus of this story. The story focused on faith. That's what is in view. That's the main theme, faith. Look at the response of Jesus, verse 17. Jesus says, answer, Oh, faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? His problem was faithless. Now, later on, when the disciples came to Jesus in the privately and asked, how come we couldn't cast out the demon? Jesus answered, Because of little faith. According to the Mark narrative, this father of this child came to Jesus. If you can do anything, help us. Jesus answered, if you can do anything, all things are possible for those who believe. And the father said, he cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. You see? Faith, 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 believing. That's the repeated theme in this story. What's in view here in this story is about faith. Now, do you have faith? Do you have faith? Do you have big faith? Large faith or small faith? Weak faith? What is the role of faith in our relationship with the Lord? What are we supposed to know about faith from this story? This text teaches us something critical about faith. One, are you with me, church? My first point. Faith is the seed that Jesus wanted to plant in us, plant in us through his ministry. And faith is also the fruit or the product that Jesus wants to reap from us through his ministry. Not something else through faith. Let me say that again. Faith is the seed that Jesus wanted to plant in you. And faith is the fruit, the product Jesus wants to reap from you. Not something else through faith. Go back to verse 17 again. He says, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? So I have done all this ministry, teaching you, showing you all my glory and power, and you're still faithless. What he wanted to see from this crowd and these many, most of the people of that generation was faith. His ministry was to give them faith. And you are still faithless. How long am I need to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? 
All these things, you witness my words, my teachings, what I have done, all my power and miracles. And still, many of this generation were faithless. What Jesus was looking from the people was faith. Do you have faith? That's what Jesus wanted to plant in the people. That's what Jesus wanted to reap from the people. These people were learning directly from Jesus. These people witnessed the power and the miracle of Jesus. But how come they were still faithless? Because they were twisted in their mind. Because they were twisted in their mind. Faithless and twist generation. I'll give you an example. I think from... I think this demonstrates well about how they perverted the truth of Jesus Christ, how they refused to believe. I will find this example from John, Gospel of John, chapter 9. In that story, this, I think this is demonstrated well. In that story, the blind man received the sight by Jesus. Jesus healed the blind man. Now, John 9, verse 8 says this. The neighbors, do we have... We don't have it? We need to then, uh, please turn to, I, I need to show it to you. Please turn to John chapter 9, the gospel of John chapter 9. Gospel of John 9, verse 8. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not a man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, he kept saying, I am the man. Now, so these people were saying, hold on, hold on. This is not the blind man. He sees. How did he, how did he see? How hell does he see now? I was like, oh, no, he's not the man. Oh, he just looks like him. Like they were all saying that. Like he's been keep saying, no, he healed me. Jesus healed me. He keeps saying that. No, I am the person. Verse 10, so they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Salem and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. Now, jump to verse 15. 15. So the Pharisees again, again asked him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. They were talking about Jesus. Jesus is not from God, because he does not keep Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such a sign? And then there was a division among them. So they said, Again to the blind man. So they were arguing with each other. No, no, Jesus healed. No, he did not. How can he do it? He's a sinner. He doesn't keep Sabbath like we do. But how can he heal a blind man? Like they were arguing with each other. It's like, you know, forget it. Come here. Let me ask you again. And they are asking this blind man again. Verse 18. Jump to verse 18. The Jews did not believe that he was, he had been blind. Now they came to the point that, you know what? He was not even blind from the beginning. I, I don't believe Jesus healed him. He, I, you know, he must be not, not really blind from the beginning. That's the conclusion they came. And have received his sight until... Now, now they call the parents of this blind man. They call the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? He was born blind. Uh, He was born blind. How how then does he now see? Now the parents answer, We know, one, that this is our son. Two, that he was born blind. We know that. But how he now sees, we do not know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. In other words, he is old enough. You ask him. He will speak for himself. And verse 22 says, the parents said it because they were afraid of those Pharisees and scribes, those leaders. Because they could be socially outcast. Persecutions. They say, oh, just ask him. 
Jump to 24, verse 24. So the, for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, so now, bring the man again. And they say, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I don't know. The blind man said, I don't know if Jesus is a sinner. That's okay. But one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. I was blind, but now I see. This man said it. And they said to him, verse 26, what did he do to you? How did he open his eyes? Are you serious? He's, we're going to ask. We're going to go back to the question again. They are asking again. How did he open your eyes? Verse twenty-seven. He answered him, "I have told you already, and you will not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? I I can feel the frustration of this blind man and saying like." Are we serious? You're asking me again, again, and again? You call my parents and ask, and now, again? You want to hear it again? You know what? I told you. It's just, you are not willing to listen. This is how twisted a man can be in his stubbornness. Faithlessness it's not because of lack of evidence. Faithlessness is due to unwillingness to believe. Because they don't like it. Because it doesn't fit with what they want to hear. It doesn't fit with what they desire. So I cannot be sure about it. So they are twisted. They pervert the truth of Jesus. Like, no. Maybe he wasn't even blind. Are you sure he's your child? Just just twisting all things. Hear me. Refuse to believe. Now, coming back to our passage, Matthew. Now pay attention to that. Jesus' rebuke to those people how long am I to bear with you? How long am I to be with you? That rebuke was not on their lack of performance nor lack of power. You don't have power? No, it was directed to their faithlessness. You still don't believe? After all, Faith is the most important quality to be a follower of Jesus. In fact, if you don't have faith, how can you even be a follower or person of Christ? You don't believe? You are not His. Should we care about our faith? Sure, yes. Do you? Do you care about your faith? This ministry exists for your faith. For people come to believe in Jesus. For your faith to grow in Jesus. That you have bigger, stronger faith. The ministry exists for your faith because Jesus, through the ministry, planted faith in you and on that day what he will expect to reap from you is your faith give me your faith on that day the Lord will show me your faith he will measure that from us secondly this teaches us how to fight unbelief how to fight unbelief. I'm going to turn our attention to Mark. Mark gives a little bit more detail of this story. And Mark 9.20 says this, And they brought the boy to him. And when the Spirit saw him, him there is Jesus. When the Spirit saw, the evil Spirit saw Jesus, immediately he converts the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about 
foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And he has often cast him into fire and into water and to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. I cannot imagine the heart of this father watching his own son suffering in great pain and tortured by the evil spirit day and night. And it has been happening to his son not only just a few months, but for years from his little childhood. And every time when the evil spirit tortured his son, all he had can do was just watching him. Every time when this happened, the father had to face his inability that there is nothing he can do to help his son out. And this father was desperate. Somehow, this father heard about Jesus, the power of Jesus, that how he heals people, how he casts the evil spirit out. So he, in hope and faith, brought his son all the way to Jesus. If the father did not believe in Jesus, he wouldn't even be there. But he brought the suffering son and waiting for Jesus, even though Jesus wasn't there at that moment, until he comes out from the mountain. He believed. And at the same time, what he said is, if you can do anything, wait, what? Does he believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus? Does he have faith or not? And he says, the father cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. He's basically saying, Lord, I believe, help me because I do not believe. It sounds contradicting. That's what he's saying. I believe, help me because I do not believe. Do you understand him? So does he believe or not? Seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all will be given to you. God is our Father. He cares for us. He will provide. He will meet our needs. And we believe that and we say amen to that. Because we believe. But time to time we worry about tomorrow. We worry about next month. We become anxious. What if? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We believe God is our Father. He cares. He will meet. He will help us. He will be. We believe. But when we are worried about something or anxious, there's some sort of unbelief is going on there. So do you believe or not believe? A man went to see a doctor for a regular checkup. And he found out that he has a cancer. His heart drops. He's scared. He believes, he believes that God is absolutely in control. And God is with him. He's present with him. God is infinitely wise. And everything he does to me in my life is good. God is good. He believes. But he's scared. He doesn't know what to do. And he has, why God? What's going on? Why me? So, does he have faith or not? Struggling between this belief and unbelief, both in him. This father believed in Jesus, 
in some part of him was there was unbelief. He could not completely and fully trust and believe in Jesus. So he cried out, I believe, but help my unbelief. Why? Why he was struggling with unbelief? Because his lack of knowledge of Jesus. Pay attention to what he said. He said, if you can do anything. If he had a better understanding, deeper understanding, knowing who he's talking to, to whom he's dealing with here, that Jesus, the power and the glory of the, the person standing right there in front of him, that the creator of the world, the great I am in flesh, standing in front of him. It's like if he understood his power, how the demons tremble before him, even the legions of demons at his word live and obey, if he knew that, or oh, who Jesus really is in deeper sense, Instead of, if you can do anything, instead of that, he will rejoice. I have Jesus. Finally, Jesus came. All done. Good. He will rejoice. See, his struggling with unbelief is due to his lack of knowledge of who Jesus really is. This is why we need to know him more through his word. Through his word. More we know him stronger our faith is. And, brothers and sisters, are you with me? Remember him. When I had a trouble, when I was struggling financially, struggling with health, how he faithfully sustained me, how he faithfully guarded me, encouraged me, carried me, provided me. You remember him in your life. How he carried you until this day. And when you worry about tomorrow, when you have a problem the following month, like, I remember him. I know the faithfulness of God. He will also help me. He will also meet me there. He will also carry me. I remember him. Says God, what he said, his promise, how he did in my life, he will again. The knowledge of him will help you to fight against unbelief. The knowledge of him, you remember him will help you to fight against unbelief. Now, in this context, Jesus said to the father of this child, all things are possible for those who believe. And the very same message Jesus gave to his disciples. He says, if you have a faith like a grain of mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. But I have a question here. Let's go back to our text again. Verse 20. Would you? Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 there. There Jesus said, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed. You know the grain of mustard seed is very small. Clearly, Jesus is referring to something very small, little faith, little faith. That's what Jesus is referring to. Then you can say to a mountain, be moved, and the mountain will be moved. Now, I know like some people mess this with this verse. You can try it. You can go home, and if you have a mountain behind your house, and say, like, Lord, I believe, I have faith. Be moved in the name of Jesus. And the next morning you wake up, the mountain did not even move one inch. You're still there. And you probably think, I knew it. 
hey, you need to have faith. Like in you know, this passage is not for us to test God in that way. That's not the point. First, come on, church. This expression is a idiom or proverb the first century Jews used for to describe something, accomplishes something of the great difficulty. Like what it seemed to be almost impossible when you do it, they say, the mountain was moved. So Jesus is clearly using their expression that as a metaphorical illustration, what it seemed to be a great of difficulty, what it seemed to be almost impossible, you can do it. That's what Jesus is saying. Not for us to test the mountain like be moved. But my question is this. Look at verse 20 again. When the disciple asked, how come we couldn't do it, casting out the demon? Jesus' answer was, because of your little faith. And then he says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, in other words, if you have little faith, nothing is impossible for you. What, 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 what? what? Hold on, you just said right now, you couldn't do it because of little faith. But if you have little faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Do you, do you see my question here? Are you with me? Jesus said, you couldn't do it because of little faith. But if you have a little faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Now, Matthew 10, earlier, Jesus sent his disciples away to go to a mission journey. Don't take anything with you, not a lot of money, not a lot of clothing. But they obeyed in the words of Jesus, that you will be able to heal people and cast demons out. And they were successful at the time. So they went to the mission journey. They were healing people, casting demons out. So they probably thought when this father brought the son, the, you know what, I have done this before. I healed people. I cast out demons before. I can do it. Bring him. And they failed this time. And they were wondering, how come, how come we couldn't do it this time? The problem is that they treated this power of casting out demons as if something they can have in their possession. That I have the power. Sometimes some Christians think, because I have a strong faith, I have some sort of spiritual power. I have power in my possession. He must have some power. A fan cannot blow wind unless it is plugged in, plugged into the power. Iron cannot make heat, create heat, unless it is plugged into power. Jesus said in the Gospel of John 15 to his disciple, apart from me, you can do nothing. Faith is what plugs us to the power of God. Faith is what connects us to God. When the electronical things are plugged in and to the power, it can give us light. It can show us things on the TV. It can do the purify the air. It can blow wind. It can create heat. All things are possible when it's plugged into power. One does this. The other one does this. All kinds of things are possible. Because the power does not reside in us, but God Almighty. He's the one. All things are possible with Him. What faith does is we hold on to Him. That we can experience His power. Peter walking on the water. That's impossible. No man can do it. It's almost the same impossible than moving the mountain. A man walking on the water with the winds and the waves. But when Jesus says, Peter, come. 
you can walk on the water, you can come to me. And Peter believed. And in obedience, he took a step. And he walked on the water. Not because Peter has some sort of power within him, the, the power he can walk on the water. No, because Jesus has the power to make him walk and the faith of Peter tagged on him. It was Jesus who made Peter be able to walk on the water. As soon as Peter lost his sight from Jesus and his faith was shaky, he sank into the water. All things are possible with God. And those who believe will experience the presence and the power of God. What they supposed to have done, the disciples, is this. Jesus said it at the end of the Mark's narrative, Mark's story, at the end, Mark 9, 29, just listen to me. Same story, at the end of that, Jesus said, He said to them, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. If they have faith, what they supposed have done is praying. Instead of, I can do this, I can cast out demons. No, what they supposed have done, faith, Jesus, Father, praying. If we have faith, we will pray. I'll tell you why. Because faith does not highlight our ability, but our faith highlights the ability of the object of our faith, what he can do. Faith always turns our eyes and attention to him, I believe in you. Now, I believe I can do No, I believe in you, the object of my faith. You, in you, and with you, all things are possible. So what they're going to do, even if they have a little faith, they will pray. The power is not in me. Power is not from me. It's from you. You can do it. I believe in your goodness. I believe in your power, your wisdom. Yes, and I will pray to you. I will ask you. That's my third point. The true faith relies on him. And it will lead us to pray. Now let me end with this. Some of you may think, or say, Billy, I don't think I have a strong faith. I don't have a loss of faith. What about me? I have very little weak faith. Will God work in me and through me? My friends, don't you hear the invitation of Jesus and his encouragement here? He said, as long as you have a faith like a mustard seed, mustard seed, God will do great things to you. The man, father of this child, cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. Did Jesus say? Rejecting him, say, you know what, your faith is not full, not a lot, it's not big, it's not complete trust. I see unbelief in you, like, Get out. I'm not going to do this. Is that what we see here? See your good and gracious, merciful king. And if you have little faith, and we do, then we should cry with this man and say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Whenever we are anxious, whenever we worry about something, we should say, Lord, I believe in you. Help my unbelief. Increase my faith. 
give me faith. And this faith is gift from God. So church, devote yourself to pray and strive to know Him. Because on that day, He will do accounting with you and what He will seek from you is your faith. Show me your faith. That's why He allows all kinds of things in our lives that we may grow in faith. Let's pray.